have your way. Lord, I thank you for moving in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you glory. Jesus! 
worship you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you're holy. I, the Lord loves your worship. Let's just worship you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mighty Holy Spirit. Mighty Holy Spirit. Mighty Holy Spirit. There's nobody like you. Yes, Lord. Oh, have your way today. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're worshiping you in spirit and truth. Lord, in spirit and truth. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Your throne has come down in our midst. Lord, I thank you. Wheels of fire are here. Your glory is here. Your miracle-working power is here. Right here on, right here in Galveston Island. Lord, and those that are watching, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Those that don't know Jesus, I thank you, Holy Spirit. You're drawing them to you. You're lifting up Jesus. You said if you're lifted up, you will draw men unto you. Lord, I thank you. You're drawing the lost unto you today. Those that are nearest eternity. Lord, I thank you that your miracle healing power is here. Lord, I praise you, Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. You may be seated if you want to. Today we're going to partake of the Lord's table. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Before we partake of the Lord's table, the Lord wants me to share some things about the blood of Jesus. Many people, when talking about the blood of Jesus, mention Jesus being crucified and His blood being shed and and yes, that is all true, but the, many people don't realize, maybe you do, maybe some of you don't, is that Jesus shed His blood seven times. Seven times. Everybody say seven times. And every one of those times was for, was for a specific need, a specific situation. And so I want us to I want us to look at these. That's at least what I, what I think we're going to do. The Holy Spirit may just change at any moment, and that, and that's we're going to follow the Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles, whether it's digital or whether it's physical, if not, you can listen to me. The first time that Jesus shed His blood was at Gethsemane. In in Luke chapter. 22 verse 44 it says and being in agony he was praying very fervently and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground and and um, if you don't there's a translation that I want to recommend if you don't have it it's called the Kenneth S. Weiss translation because the Kenneth S. Weiss was a Greek scholar and so I'm going to read it out of his translation. And you'll, you'll find why I love this so much. It says, And having entered a state of severe mental and emotional struggle to the point of agony, he was praying more earnestly, and his perspiration became like great drops of blood by reason of the fact that his blood burst through the ruptured walls of the capillaries. The latter caused by his agony, coloring the perspiration and enlarging the drops continually falling upon the ground. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was under such mental pressure and agony that his perspiration 
actually became blood. Wow. Medically, in recent times, they have medical science is so far behind the Bible, but they have proven that this is possible. There's no need for that proof. The fact that it happened in the Bible, amen, amen is proof that it happened. Jesus was on the verge of, of a mental collapse in the Garden of Gethsemane so that his perspiration turned into drops of blood. The reason why that happened was so that you and I could be free from mental problems, free from mental anguish, free from nervous breakdowns, free from suicide, free. And I and I can just sense by the power of the Holy Spirit today is that His power is here today. There are people here today that have been under mental pressure, under mental stress, mental stress. But God's power is here today to free you and to set you free. Lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Then we find the second time, the very second time that the blood of Jesus was shed was the crown of thorns upon His head. Matthew chapter 27 verse 29 says, In weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on His head and put a reed, a staff, in His right hand. And kneeling before Him, they made sport of Him, saying, Hail, greetings, good health to you, long life to you, King of the Jews. Then when those when that crown of thorns was jabbed into Jesus' head, his blood began to be shed the second time. Everybody say the second time. The reason why it was a crown of thorns was to free us from the curse. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, one of the one of the curses that came on the earth is that man would have to work and have to deal with thorns and thistles. Roses used to not have thorns. Now they have thorns. Sticker birds, all of these things. Thorns are a sign of the curse. And Jesus became a curse for us to free us from the curse. Amen. Look, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And Jesus shed His blood when the the thorns went down into His head and His blood began to flow. It was to free you from the curse of the law. The curse of the law is threefold. Spiritual death. Everybody say spiritual death. And poverty. And sickness. And so, whatever it is that you're facing today, whether it's spiritual death, His blood was shed for you. Whether it was poverty, if you're in a financial struggle, His blood was shed for you. If there's, if you need a miracle of healing in your body, that blood was shed even way before that His back was beaten the second time. Everybody say, the crown of thorns. Third time that Jesus shed His blood was His face was marred. Matthew chapter 27 verse 30 said they spat on Him and took the reed and began to beat Him on the head. This was prophesied of by the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 52 verse 14 He said, just as many were appalled at Him because He was so disfigured. You see, that beating was was beating His face to a pulp. There's never been a picture or a painting of Jesus that actually depicted what He went through. That's right. And even even the movie, The Passion of the Christ, it did not depict what He looked like. What do you mean he didn't depict? Because I'm going to give you the scripture. Just as many were appalled at him because he he was so disfigured yeah. that he didn't seem human. Yeah. And simply no longer looked like a man. Jesus' face did not look human. This is before he ever was hung on the cross. You say, why did Jesus go through all of these things? For you and me. One reason. For you and me. 
Amen. That was the complete Jewish Bible. Now I'm going to give it to you out of the Names of God Bible. The Names of God Bible says it this way. Many will be shocked by Him. His appearance was so disfigured that He won't look like any other man. His looks will be so disfigured that He will hardly look like a human. That happened when they continually beat Him with that reed. You'll say, why did His face become ugly? His face be became ugly to, to beautify us. Are you listening? Yes, Psalm 22, verses 1 and 2. Um, tell us some more about it. And it says, my El, my El. El is, is one of the names, is, is, is a Hebrew name for God. My God, my God, or my El, my El. Why have you abandoned me? Why are you so, so far away from helping me? So far away from the words of my groaning. My Elohim, which is plural for God. My God, my Elohim, I cry out by day, but you not answer. Also at night, but I find no rest. In, in the Names of God Bible, verses 6, 7, and 8, it says, Yet I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned by humanity and despised by people. All who see me make fun of me. Insults poured from their mouths. This is what happened to Jesus. They shake their heads and say, Put yourself in Yahweh's hands. Let Him save you. Let Yahweh rescue Him since He is pleased with Him. Why did Jesus become ugly? Why did His face become marred? For one reason. So that He could beautify you with salvation. Amen. Jesus became ugly nice. with our sins so that we could become beautified to fulfill Psalm 149 verse 4 where the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He will beautify the humble. Amen. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. Can Hallelujah. we give the Lord praise Hallelujah. for that? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The fourth, the fourth time that His blood was shed. Are you getting the picture? Yes. Jesus didn't even look like a human before they ever whipped Him. The fourth, the fourth time His blood was shed was His back. I'm going to share some things with you perhaps you've never heard about His back. I've heard... Uh, through the years, and I've been in the ministry over 44 years. Started in my teens, and I turned 62 August 30th of last year. Most of the time, and I did it too. I would quote the scripture, by his stripes, we are healed. Who 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 himself him who knew no sin became sin for us and we might be made the righteousness of God and and that in in the in Isaiah it says with his stripes we are healed first Peter 2 24 says we were healed amen and yet I didn't have understanding of the original language and that's why I said stripes I've heard preachers get up and say there was 39 stripes, one for every category of disease. And, and, and I listened to that. I believed that until, until I studied it myself. So let's take a look at what the Scripture actually does say. John chapter 19, verse 1 says, So Pilate took Jesus... I'm reading out of the Amplified now. Pilate took Jesus and scourged, flogged, whipped Him. You say, you know, you ought to read that. They whipped Him. Well, what does it mean? So, people would come up and just say, well, the Jews, you know, they, they whipped 39 times. You see, the problem with that 
is that Jews did not whip Jesus. Right. I'm reading out of the IVP Bible background commentary right now in the New Testament. It says Jewish law allowed only 39 lashes. Roman law allowed scourging till the soldier grew tired. We don't know how many times Jesus was whipped because the Roman soldiers were allowed to whip and beat until they were exhausted. Yeah. Many people never made it to the cross right. that were crucified because of the Roman brutality. Yeah. And the texts report that they were beaten until bones or entrails yeah. Yeah. were sometimes bare right. to where his bones were exposed. Jesus' intestines were exposed. Now I'm going to read 1 Peter 2.24 out of the Kenneth S. Weiss translation. It says, Who himself carried up to the cross our sins in his body and offered himself theirs on an altar, doing this in order that we, having died with respect to sins, might might live with respect to righteousness by means of whose bleeding stripe I've dug into the Greek the word is singular there's no plural there Kenneth S. Weiss brings it out whose bleeding stripe everybody say stripe Stripe. Stripe. not stripes the word stripe I'm still reading that translation The word stripe is in the singular here, a picture of our Lord's back after the scourging. One mass of raw, quivering flesh with no skin remaining, trickling with blood, you were healed. The truth of the matter is Jesus was whipped with that cat of nine tails and then they pulled it every time and every time they pulled it more flesh was ripped off and whipped again more flesh was pulled off until it was one stripe there was no skin i want Jesus. you to get a picture Amen. of the sacrifice Thank you, Jesus. there was no skin left Thank you, Lord. everybody say no skin left Amen. one huge bleeding stripe You say, why? Why did Jesus go through that? For one reason. For your healing. For your healing. There are Christians that will go on without without even coming for prayer. Perhaps there's an aggravating something. Maybe one ear you can't hear out of. Or one... I want to tell you, when you realize what Jesus went through for your physical healing, as we partake of the Lord's Supper in a few minutes, there's going to be there's going to be creative, miracle-working healing power that's going to flow here. Those of you that are listening by Facebook Live or by YouTube, you can go ahead and get something to represent your elements. If you're at home, if you have some crackers or something, the Lord will direct you what to get. There you go. And we'll partake of the Lord's table. But as we partake, it's not going to be a ritual. No. It's not going to be a religious format. Come on. It's going to be an actual partaking of the sacrifice of Jesus and receiving what he paid for you. Hallelujah. So that was the fourth time that his blood was shed was when his back became one huge bleeding stripe for your healing. The fifth time, everybody say number five. Number five. Get a picture of this. Raw meat. Can't tell his face is a man. If that wasn't enough, 
And Jesus didn't die under the scourging. He got up, began to walk. John 19. And so the fifth time that His blood was shed was when He walked. John 19, 17. And they took Jesus and led Him away. So He went out bearing His own cross. Here is Jesus walking with a raw back, no skin. Every time that cross was on His shoulder, every time He moved, more blood began to be shed. More blood began to pour out. You'll say, why? For your walk. Jesus, as He was walking and shed His blood, was so that your walk in Him could be cleansed. 1 John 1, verse 7 says in the Amplified, but if we are really living and walking in the light, as He Himself is in the light, we have true, unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestation. So as we are walking and living in the life, see, Jesus shed His blood while He was walking so that our walk could be cleansed. Hallelujah. Would you just receive that cleansing right now? Lord, we receive Your cleansing right now. I thank You for Your crimson flow that has flowed from Emmanuel's veins. That blood right now is on the heavenly mercy seat. Or right now, it's available to anybody that whosoever wants to be partake of the blood of Christ and to have their sins washed away, that blood right now is on the real mercy seat that is in that is in front of the throne of Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. That was number five. Number six, they crucified. You see, Jesus' blood was shed five times before He was ever nailed to the cross. John 19, verse 18. It says, and I'm reading out of the names of God's Bible right now, the soldiers crucified Yeshua, which is the Hebrew name for Jesus. And two other men there, Yeshua was in the middle. In the crucifixion, Jesus' hands and feet for our our Christian work and our walk to remind us that we, when He was crucified, we are crucified. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ in Him and the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. When He was nailed to the cross, His hands and His feet. It was so that we could live a life crucified to the cross. Amen. Say, I am crucified. Paul said, I am. I am, present tense, crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, the life that I now live, that Daryl lives, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. How could anybody reject Jesus? What an awful price He paid for our sins, our mental anguish, nervous breakdowns. Somebody has somebody is, is, is experienced... A, you, you, I, I hear these words, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I want to tell you, no, you're not going to lose your mind. Oh, because because the power of the Lord is here today. The power of the Lord is here today to touch your mind. To heal your mind. Amen. No, you're not going to go out and end your life. 
No, because God, God has has sent us here today to bring the truth of the gospel to you. Right here, right here at 45th and Seawall, Galveston, Texas. Glory to God. The seventh time that his blood was shed was after he died. John chapter 19, verses 33 and 34. It says, When the soldiers came to Yeshua and saw he was already dead, they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers stabbed Yeshua, stabbed Jesus' side with a spear, and blood and water immediately came out. You'll say, Why blood and water? That was for the new birth. Amen. That was to that was so that you and I could be born again. And I'm going to give you some scripture. First Peter chapter one verses eighteen and nineteen says, "Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ." Yes. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. I want to tell you the blood of Jesus is not a covering. I've heard people say, grace, I am covered by grace. No, no, there's no covering by grace. That's Old Testament. That's right. That's Old Testament. The blood of Jesus is an eraser. Eraser. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus removes your sin. The blood of bulls and goats and the the ashes of a heifer could not remove sin. That's why every year the priest had to go behind the veil. But I want to tell you, when Jesus was on the cross, God Himself tore the veil from top to bottom. Never again do you have to go through a man. You have have one-on-one access. You say, Father God, I come to You in the name of Jesus. And you have His attention because of the blood of Jesus that was shed. And then 1 Peter 1.23 says, You have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding Word of God. And then Ephesians 5 verses 25 through 27 says this, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her so that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the Word. You see, we were born again by two things. The washing of water by the Word and the blood. That's why blood and water... Somebody help me. I got the winds blowing things out of my out of my physical Bible. Thank me. Thank you, Brother Tom. Hallelujah. So he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water by the word, that he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and faultless. Glory to God. Say, I've been born again again. by incorruptible seed, by the Word of God. I am free by the washing of water, by the Word. Say, when the water came out, it was to cleanse me by the washing of water, by the Word. When your blood came out, it was to erase my sin. To cause a new birth to take place. So that I could become a new creation in Christ. Would you lift up your hands and just give Him praise. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. I want us to go ahead and and, and first before we uh, pass out the the elements. 
I'd like everybody just to bow your heads. If there's anybody here that you're, you're not positively sure that you're right with the Lord, if you've never made a personal commitment, I'm not talking about going to church, a church building. The building is not the church. As a matter of fact, Jesus is ministered mostly outside. Did you know most of Jesus' ministry was not inside the temple? We, there's no walls here at Church on the Beach. Jesus ministered many times by the seaside as the waves were rolling in. Amen. He ministered up on the mountainside. Amen. When He fed the multitude, there was no building to be able to even hold the people. As a matter of fact, when He ministered in the temple, most of the time it was to rebuke the religious leaders. Matter of fact, one time he came in and he, with a whip uh -huh. yes. to drive out all of the heresy that was going on inside the four walls. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of of a heresy and a lot of stuff that's yeah. going on yeah. right now behind four walls. Amen. But I want to tell you, the Church of the Living God. Or is those that are gathered together that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb that have become a brand new creation in Christ. And if you're here today and you say, you just say, Pastor Darrell, uh, remember me in this prayer. Because see, we got to get this straight before we partake of the Lord's table. You say, remember me in this prayer. I, I want to I wanna know that I'm ready to meet the Lord. Just, just slip your hand up. Say, remember me in this prayer. I want to get everything right between the Lord and me. Just slip your hand up. Just slip it up. Yes, anybody else, just slip your hand up. Anyone else, slip it up. Say, remember me in this prayer. Yes, anyone else, just slip your hand up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So before we go further, I'm going to lead a prayer. And I want everybody to... Re and those of you by Facebook, wherever you're getting this, right now, <clears throat> before you partake, Say, oh God, oh God, I realize, I realize without, Jesus, without Jesus, I'm lost. I'm lost. But oh God, oh God today, today, I turn away from a life of sin. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I repent of sin. I thank you for your blood. Today is removing my sin. And I say with my mouth, Jesus, you're my Lord. I believe with my heart, not my head, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. God I'm saved. Now I want you to lift your hand and just give the Lord praise for that. Lift him and just give him praise. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now we can go ahead and we can go ahead and pass out the elements as we prepare to partake of the Lord's table. You say, who can partake? Everybody, as long as Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're welcome to to come partake of communion with us. Those of you that are listening uh, by Facebook or, 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 or by YouTube, just get your elements out right where you're at. But before we t partake, the Lord wants me to read a passage of Scripture. Say what do you what do you got to do to be a part of the group here? You don't have to be. You don't have to do anything. Amen. Just believe in Jesus. Yes. You're not. You're not. You're not having to sign your name on a church roll. Make sure everybody that wants to partake of communion 
If you haven't received the elements, just just rest right. Raise your hand. Yeah. We're so glad to have y'all yeah. join us today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else out here? You want to partake of the Lord's table? Just come on up. Just come on up and join. And, and, and just join us. Please give me one. Thank you, Justin. Now, several months ago, the Holy Spirit directed me. This was when we still lived in our, our house in Dawes, and, and uh, we're trying to get all that stuff out of there. We've been doing that all last week, and we got one more <laughs> week to be out by the first of the month so that we can just totally be feet down here because that's the past. That's Amen. over. On, God has up. sent us to this that. region. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He sent us to this, this area. Amen. Alvin, Galveston, the, the whole surrounding region. Uh, the Houston Metro. Oh, come on now. You're Amen. Too. We're here because yeah. you say, why are you here? God sent us. Amen. Yes, Amen. What are you, who's backing you? God. Yep. <laughs> Who else do you need? <laughs> you don't have some group organization backing you. No. no. What do we need that for? Yeah. Who backed Paul? Yes. Right. Who backed the Apostle Paul? Yeah. No. Who did? God. God. God did. Who backed Jesus himself? God, God, did. God the Father. Who backed Peter? God did. God. Right. Who backed John? God. God. Who backed James? God. Who's backing us today? God. God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This, is, this is God's word. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, the Lord had me several months ago when we were still living in Gauz to start partaking of the Lord's table myself every morning. Amen. I had never done that before in my life. And the Lord has showed me some powerful things about the Lord's table. I partook this morning. I do it every morning. It's a sacred time be between God and me. And so, I'm going to be reading... Uh, a few verses and then we're going to get ready to partake. And, and uh, could we have could we have some uh, strumming of a a worship chorus? Just, just come on up and uh, and, and uh, play something worshipful. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Brother, what's oh, your first name me. again? Carl. Carl. That's right, Clark. Carl. Joshua busted a guitar string. All right, now. It's Clark. Clark, I'm sorry. Clark. Make sure I get it. All right, I've corrected it. It's Clark. <laughs> Amen. Joshua busted a guitar string. God sent our, our beautiful brother and sister, Brother Clark and Juanita, Juanita. to be with us. Awesome. They were with us the very first meeting. Yes. The very first meeting. And I've been looking for them when they were going to show up again. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost wow. sent them. Here, Josh. Amen. Thank you, Majero. chapter 11 starting at verse 23 now this is Paul Paul did not get instructions on partaking of the Lord's table from Peter he didn't get it from John Paul was caught up to the third heaven and God himself taught him about the Lord's table in heaven and, and notice 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For I received from the Lord Himself that which I passed on to you was given to me personally that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was treacherously delivered up and while His betrayal was in progress took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is broken for you. Do this to call Me affectionately to remembrance. 
Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the cup also, saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. I want to tell you, the covenant that Jesus made with you and me was cut by His own blood. Yes, yes. How many of you ever heard the phrase, blood's thicker than water? Most people don't understand what that really means. I didn't for most of my life. The real meaning of blood is thicker than water is that two brothers or a brother and sister or two brothers in Christ or two sisters in Christ that, that Jesus cut the covenant blood with. The blood between those two is thicker than than two, than two twins that are born in the same water sack. And that's why many times you'll find that the body of Christ, yeah. that your relationship with each other is much stronger than those of your yeah. biological yeah. relatives unless right. they too are in Christ. Amen. And so, notice he said, Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the cup also saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to call me affectionately to remembrance. The Lord is wanting you and I to call him to remembrance. You say, doesn't he know? He was, yes, he knows. But he is asking us to call him to remembrance. So today when we partake, we're not just going to say a little prayer and then partake of the elements and then go our way. No, we're going to call Him affectionately to remembrance what He did. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're representing and signifying and proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death. You say, well, He's resurrected. Yes, He's resurrected, but He doesn't want us to forget His death. So much so that His glorified body still has the nail prints. For eternity, we will look at those nail prints. For eternity, we will look at His side, the scars, even in His glorified body. He doesn't want us to forget what He did for you and me. Today, I, I believe it's going to become more real than it's ever become in your life today. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're representing, signifying, and proclaiming the facts of the Lord's death until He comes again. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of Him, to do it as a ritual is to partake in an unworthy manner. It's a relationship. Those that, that, that partake in an, unway, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man thoroughly examine. I love the Amplified. Everybody say, thoroughly examine. Thoroughly examine. Myself. And only when I have done so, should I eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discriminating and, rec discriminating and recognizing with due appreciation that it is Christ's body, eats and drinks a, sur a, a sentence, a verdict of judgment upon himself. That careless and unworthy participation is the reason many of you are weak. Now he's talking to a spirit-filled church. Yeah. And Paul is saying many of you in the church are weak and sickly. And quite enough of you have fallen into the sleep of death. I've seen the, a spirit of death run rampant in a church body. Yeah. Funeral after funeral, 
after funeral. Yeah. People dying before their time. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord, Paul, is saying that the reason that it was happening to this church is because they were not examining themselves and discerning the Lord's body. Amen? Amen. Yes. Verse 31. For if we certainly examined ourselves, detecting our shortcomings, and recognized our own condition, we, we should not be judged and penalty decreed by the divine judgment. So today, I want us to bow our heads. It's Brother Clark plays and, and sings for us and I want you to examine yourself I'm going to examine my I already examined myself this morning but it's but it's not early morning now so I'm examining myself right now you say what shall I do while my head's bowed if there's any ought you have toward anybody any unforgiveness right now between you and the Lord voice it you say God remove it and whoever it is that you're having that you've had, that whoever's wronged you right now I want you to speak their name right now and say I forgive them you say it to the Lord not you don't say it to another human say it straight to the Lord right now say I forgive it may be several people I want you to say I forgive them right now examine yourself and I'm going to do the same stages because that's how the word says Lord we thank you if you if you haven't already if you, you'll take the top layer off there's a wafer under there Father Lord you said your body was broken for you Lord we thank you for your sacrifice we thank you by your huge bleeding strike we were healed Lord, I thank you your healing power is flowing right now. And I want you to take and break it right now. Yeah. And as we partake, I want you to receive the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ in your body. Now I want you to praise Him. I want you to praise Him, let you praise him for His healing power right now. Thank you, Lord, your healing power. 
is flowing in me right now, driving out all sickness, driving out all disease. Lord, I give you praise. You paid the price for our healing from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. The Lord, we also, we thank you for your blood. Lord, that was shed for the remission of our sins. I thank you, your blood has erased sin, has removed it from our lives. And Lord, we give thanks for your blood. Let's protect. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we worship you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. They're coming to pick up. Right there. Oh, Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we honor you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. There, there are needs here today. If, if you have a need today and you need personal prayer, then I want you to, I want you to, I want you to come forward right now. Those that are, on, we're going to say goodbye to those that are in our, our Facebook audience. God bless you. We thank you for joining with us today.